Welcome and good morning, everyone. Happy to have you along today for this morning session where we'll talk a little bit about uh, everything that's going on in the Medicare market and how you can bring those changes efficiently and effectively to uh, your entire book of business, or at least as many people as you can get in a room, um, in this AEP. My name is Randy Lober, Growth Marketing Manager here at Action Benefits, and part of my role is to help do whatever we can to help you grow your books. Today is through a conversation where, again, we're navigating some of the changes uh, coming up. Joined today by uh, one of uh, the members of our individual team, uh, Debbie Brown. She's an account coordinator on the individual team. Debbie, want to give you a chance to say hi before we get started. Good, good morning, team. Uh, everybody out there. Um, yeah, I'm Debbie Brown. Most of you guys all know me. Um, if you have any questions after this and you need to talk to anybody, you can contact me, myself, or anybody on the individual team. We have a rock solid team going this year, so. Bring on the questions and any concerns you have. We're ready for you. We have a rock solid team every year, but yes, especially this year too. All right. Uh, so thank you again for do joining us, Debbie. Uh, well, I certainly appreciate your expertise coming forward here, and I'm sure our agents will as well. Um, so the gist of today's session is there's so many changes in the Medicare market, so many plan changes whether it's changes to core medical benefits, whether it's changes to formularies, you, with any luck, have a sizable book of business, um, and you're gonna need to figure out how to talk to all those people about these benefit changes and help them find alternatives if that's the right fit for them. And you only have a limited amount of time to do so, this AEP. And that's just like retention, right? Most of you are probably growth for focused as well. You want to get more people into your book of business, this AEP. Um, so there's a lot to do. And I, today's conversation is all about helping you do that a little bit more efficiently. To help uh, lay some groundwork, though, and know which talking points I might need to hammer and Debbie might need to help me hammer a little bit today, I want to invite you to put a few letters in the chat for me here. Which of these statements best describes you? Is it A, you're brand new to the Medicare market? This is your first rodeo and uh, you're just happy to be here along for the ride. Is it B, you have some experience in this market, but you're new to working with action benefits? Is it C, you have experience with Medicare and action, but you're really curious about this topic? Or is it D, you're a seasoned pro and you just love spending time with action? You rolled out of bed today and said, there's a webinar with Randy and Debbie and I got to be there. That's that's me. Um, give you a moment to see what you think in the chat here. I uh, thank you, Diane and Danny, for uh, putting your thoughts in here as well. Go ahead and everyone else take some time to just throw a letter in here too. Okay. And just as a reminder, um, you can toggle where the chat goes, whether you just want Debbie and I to see it or you want everyone to see it. Some of you chose everyone. Some of you just chose the panelists, which is Debbie and I. Either is fine with me. Depends on your uh, level of comfort in sharing here today. We do have some uh, seasoned experts here who are curious here. And don't worry, Danny. Uh, you, you know, we'll take our time and make sure we'll build from the ground up here to make sure you leave here well prepared. Uh, Becky, welcome aboard. Glad to have you here in joining us for this AEP. And Allison, well, thanks for share, saying, uh, for, for uh, sharing the L word with us. We love spending time with you too, and uh, glad to have you along here this morning. So let's talk briefly about where we want to go today, give you a sense of the, the mileposts on our journey over the next 40 minutes or so. First, want to make sure you, uh, we recap some of the most impactful changes in the Medicare market. Uh, your clients are going to ask, hey, where did this medical deductible come from? Or why am I paying a premium now for these, uh, for these plans I used to pay nothing for? And want to make sure you are well armed with some talking points to support those conversations. Also want to uh, headline, you know, uh, developing a plan for talking to clients you already have. So how do you efficiently approach and talk to and have conversations with and maybe make new enrollments with and for those you already have in your book? And also we can talk a little bit about how, uh, because you've done that so efficiently, how do you find uh, people you haven't written yet, right? People that aren't yet in your book of business, maybe need to know more about the options on the table. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can get in a room with them here as well. 
So we'll start off talking about what's going on here in the Medicare market. What's driving all these changes? What is underpinning all these benefit reductions and uh, or some or vendor enhancements, depending on the carrier you're talking to, um, that that we're seeing here. First key thing you need to know is that for contract year 2025, this year coming up, is that CMS did slash reimbursement rates. Um, there is some disagreement as to how far that reimbursement rate act, or that slash actually goes. Uh, the Better Medicare Alliance, which is a group of Medicare Advantage uh, plan sponsors, so you can bet Blue Cross, Priority Health, Humana, UHC, all part of this alliance, they took a look or they studied the impact of that slash and found that their payment per month per beneficiary could drop by about 1% next year uh, when CMS finalized the changes. CMS disputes that a little bit. CMS says now it's only going to be about a tenth or a tenth of a percent or just under. Uh, since then, carriers have come out and say, no, actually, as we've dug, crunched the numbers on this, we're seeing a, a real drop or we have projected a real drop near one and a half percent coming out of Humana. Centene thinks it's actually going to be a 1.3% drop in their income. So let's think about that for a minute. We've got carriers that are losing reimbursements from CMS. They're losing about one to one and a half percent. And that doesn't seem like a ton until you remember the other side of the, the coin here, right? So they take in money, but they also spend money. And their medical loss ratios across the board are climbing higher and higher. They're climbing into 85, 87. Uh, I've seen some as high as 88 as you look at uh, carriers' quarterly report earnings. So they're being squeezed from both ends. Less income, more to spend it on. They've got to find a way to make money somewhere. And where do they do that? Well, they do that by slashing benefits. We'll take a more practical look at that in just a little bit. But that's like the first big pillar that's really disrupting the market here is uh, the adjustment of reimbursement rates coupled with climbing MLRs. The second big thing that's really driving benefit changes, and this is mostly in your standalone Part Ds, but you're gonna see it play out in your Part D uh, portions of your MAPDs here as well, is everything the Inflation Reduction Act is doing to the Part D uh, benefit design. On your screen here, you've got a kind of quick recap of where we've been, uh, past, present, future, of uh, what happens with the Part D benefit and what we can see going on next year. So 2023, if you've been in the business for a while, like I know some of my friends here have, uh, was like the last year where we had an intact donut hole. It's where coverage looked like, like it had for a while, right? We're in the catastrophic phase. Uh, the Part D enrollees still had a responsibility, uh, that 5%, right? Part D plans picked up some here as well. Medicare, CMS picked up about 80% of that. Um Plans didn't really have a ton of responsibility in 2023, uh, it, you know, after that, outside of that initial coverage phase. In 2024, the uh, mix started to shift a little bit. So you still have the deductible here in this count, this plan year, still have the additional coverage phase. You have the coverage gap, that uh, donut hole that you're used to, where plans have a little responsibility and drug manufacturers pick up the bulk of it. And then in a catastrophic phase where Part D plan, so whether it's an MAPD standalone or MAPD or a standalone, the carrier picks up 20% of that cost, CMS picks up the rest. Next year, and what's driving a lot of the changes that you're going to see, whether uh, in whether it's in MAPDs or in PDPs, carriers have a lot more financial risk, a lot more financial exposure going on. So there's still a deductible phase for 2025. That deductible, by the way, climbs to $590 uh, for anything that counts toward uh, a troop here. The initial coverage phase changes the calculus a little bit. Remember, your beneficiaries are still responsible for 25% or up to 25%, I should see, based on the basic design of the Part D benefit. But uh, your carriers are taking on 65% of that. And with the remaining 10%, sorry, I had to look around my monitor here, remaining 10% uh, covered by manufacturers. What is really going to change thing and where carriers are going to feel the squeeze, though, is remember there's that now this $2,000 out-of-pocket maximum that hits, right? So the initial coverage phase ends at $2,000, and then your beneficiaries move into that catastrophic phase. After you're in that catastrophic phase, the carrier is now paying 60% of that cost 
the manufacturer is picking up 20 and CMS is picking up the other 20% of that. So for every dollar over uh, 2000 that in drug costs that your beneficiaries experience, the carrier is paying 60 cents of that, which is far more exposure than they've seen in previous years, which means if they are spending more money on expensive drugs, uh, your tier four or five drugs, your specialty drugs, your biosimilars, so on and so forth, and they have to pick up a larger portion of that share, well, uh, they're going to have to cut benefits or adjust benefits somewhere while still trying to remain competitive in the market. So all that brings uh, some likely and confirmed impacts that you're probably seeing as carriers do their product rollouts. Absolutely, standalone Part D premiums are going up. I talked a bit about that at our uh, Part D redesign webinar a few weeks ago, talked a bit about that at the our AEP OEP kickoff summit. Uh, but the average premium is coming in, uh, you know, it's somewhere around the $50, $60 mark. Uh, so generally those are going up and you're going to see that experience across all carriers because of the financial pressures we just talked about here. You are absolutely seeing adjustments to formularies. If you were joined Aaron, Gray, and I yesterday, you saw that Blue Cross is getting rid of their single formulary they had and now has two formularies for their MAPD plans. One of those formularies is a bit leaner. Uh, one is a bit more robust, but neither is the same formulary that you may have experienced during this uh, calendar year. Same thing is going on. Well, not the exact same thing. Priority Health still has one formulary to work with, right? But as Connie Elkins was in her office uh, last week, there's some cuts to that formulary. Some things are being rearranged in that formulary. Opi opioids are moving from tier two to tier four, which makes them more expensive. Your beneficiaries may have more out-of-pocket exposure there. So that's how what, you know, one of the levers carriers are pulling to, uh, to make, make it all financially work for them. Talked a bit about the creation of additional formularies here. Uh, increase in MA co-pays and co-insurance. And gosh, if you've been paying attention to uh, your carrier rollouts, you're seeing that here as well. Not in PCP co-pays. Everyone wants a $0 PCP copay because they want that preventive care. But take a look at your inpatient hospital care copays. Take a look at your outpatient uh, search, your ASCs, your surgical centers. Take a look at nearly every other copay on that plan, and you're going to see a bit of an adjustment uh, upward. You're also seeing a reduction in MA supplemental benefits or Medicare Advantage supplemental benefits. Um, for a, there's been rumblings for a long time about the low utilization of, of silver sneakers. Most carriers we've seen are still retaining that benefit, uh, but we're seeing a little bit of decreases in some uh, carriers' medical, or sorry, dental and vision and hearing offerings, right? That money's got to come from somewhere. Some carriers are, have service area reductions. Humana pulled out of, I believe it's 13 different service areas they have coming into 2025. There's some carriers that have exited the market, market completely and I imagine you're likely going to see more utilization management. You're going to see more prior auth required for some services. And especially when it comes to moving up the formularies, the tiers two, three, four, and five, you're going to see more uh, step therapy. You're going to see more mandatory minimums, right? Or dosage uh, maximums, rather. Uh, dosage limitations is the word I'm looking for as you go forward. So there's lots of real life on the ground impacts that you're already seeing in carrier product rollouts or will see in, in the future as carriers bring these to the table. Uh, Debbie, before we go on, is there anything you want to add to you know, th these kind of table stakes that set the scenario for the rest of the conversation? No, not at this time. I mean, just like Randy said, there's so many changes going on with uh, plans and the responsibility of the carriers that unfortunately they're gonna have to put it onto some of the um, plan designs and uh, different things are going to be affected by it. But always keep it as a positive note with the clients and just say this is a better fit for them and this is to make their spending or what they don't have to spend on, especially for drugs, a little bit more um, easier for them to um, be able to afford everything. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me, Diane, I see your question uh, coming in here. Uh, I'll, let me take that before we go on. So uh, you can all see it because Diane chatted it publicly. Um, yes, 
Uh, we know that Erin has put in a request to have the presentation she shared with us yesterday uploaded to individual business agent community. I do not have a firm timeline on when that will happen, but I know that a request has been made um, and from there it's in Blue Cross's hands, right? Depending on however long it, it takes for that to happen. But yes, Erin has confirmed that request has been made. I may not be the, the, the precise answer you're looking for, Diane, but it's the best we have at the moment. <clears throat> Okay, so going forward, right, I, I laid out for you that there's a bunch of reasons that changes are happening, laid out for you that there, uh, you know, here's some where areas where you're going to see changes happening. Here's a question I have for you as experienced agents. So most of your clients are going to see a negative ANOC this year, there's or annual notice of change. If you as their agent do nothing, will they know about the upcoming coverage changes in their coverage? Is it A, of course, your clients read and understand everything in their inboxes. They never have to answer any questions, right? Is it B, maybe they could be aware if they watch the news, or is it C, no? And overwhelmingly, we're coming in with Cs, both publicly and privately. Um, they could be aware of some things if they watch the news, but if there's one thing I think we all know about, and not just Medicare beneficiaries, but people in general, they're not going to and, you know, know about the change until someone smacks them in the face with it. If you don't smack them in the face with it this fall, then the next place they're going to get smacked with it is when they go to fill their first prescription in January and go, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong here on my plan. And they're going to give that angry phone call to you. So uh, how do we reach out to many clients at once? What do we do? want to kind of give you a few timelines that we're going to work with here today and focus on a few portions of this timeline where you can maximize and uh, look for some efficiency as you communicate to folks. So as you know, right now, if you haven't checked out our training calendar, carriers are uh, in the midst of their product launches. Every carrier has either released their first look or started certification trainings um, or certification process. So please complete that so you are able to talk about these going forward and earn your ongoing renewal and new business commissions. By September 30th, annual notices of change must hit your beneficiaries' inboxes. And that's a little bit of what we'll talk about here today. But really, the key milestone I want you to think about here, because it's where you're going to have the more, most flexibility, is on October 1st, because that's that free AEP. That's where you're going to have the opportunity to start talking 2025 products uh, with folks and start planting some seeds about, yeah, we have options for you. Here's what we can do next. On October 15th, chaos ensues. Uh, that's when AEP begins, and that's where you know the rubber really hits the road. And you'll figure out uh, kind of quickly how aware your clients are of these changes and um, what's coming up. And by December 7th, of course, uh, hopefully the chaos ends, subsides a little bit, and you can take a well-reserved vacation in the tropical location of your choice. Really want to focus in on October 1st and how we can maximize those 14 days between October 1 and October 15. And to do that, we're going to start talking about clients that you already have uh, in your book of business. So how do you kind of find efficiencies in your retention this year? Uh, first of all, if your clients are opening the mail, right, they're going to get their annual notice of change. They're going to get it before September 30th, and they're probably going to call you and say, wait a minute, Something's fishy here. What's going on? Before October 1st, there are some things you can do and some things you can't do in that conversation. You can absolutely answer their direct questions and say, yes, there are some changes in the market. I and kind of give back to you, you know, some of the things that I we talked about earlier today. You can explain changes in the ANOC. So you can say, here's what your benefit was in 2024. Here's what it will be in 2025. Here's what that means for you. And you can, of course, set an appointment for October 1st or later to discuss solutions. But what you cannot do before October 1st is say you have a solution uh, to that problem because you cannot talk about 2025 products before October 1. So you can answer the phone. You can say, yes, I understand your concern. Let's make an appointment for after October 1 and go from there. In that October 1 appointment is where you can start doing the consulting and exploring uh, alternatives with them. So making the most of that pre-AEP, uh, there's a few things I want to tease that we're providing for you and a few other things you can do here as well. 
Uh, shortly in your mailboxes, you're going to, you know, annually we give all of our Medicare agents a, a small token gift of our appreciation of your business. You're also going to see a collection of pre-AEP and during AEP resources available to you here. You're going to see things like postcards you can get out to your clients, um, that informing them of the annual upcoming annual election period or open enrollment period. Uh, Medicare is going toward Medicare open enrollment, um, even though we all use AEP internally. So maybe use the, the language your clients want to use here as well, the language your clients are seeing. You can reach out with postcards. And I, you know, if you need help sending those, customizing those, getting them out there, that's certainly an option here as well. The other thing you can do during I, you know, pre-AEP to make your life a little bit easier is take advantage of whatever you use as your agency management system. So some of you are maybe a little older school. You've got, maybe you have a, a ledger where you write down everybody's emails and phone numbers. Some of you maybe keep that all in a spreadsheet. Some of you might use something like Agency Block where that has your entire book of business in it that, where you can kind of uh, mass email your clients at once. Um, any of those are good options. Any of those are good ways to start the conversation with your clients about what's coming up next year. I should point out, though, um, that we do partner with Agency Block to offer a 10% discount on your first year with the program. I have to talk more with you about that, give you some materials, uh, should you be interested in uh, really making things a bit easier for you uh, in managing your business going forward. So that's all well and good, right? And that's all the things you probably already have a plan for, those personalized phone calls, uh, those personalized mailers, getting things in people's mailboxes. But we can really see some efficiency where if we have many clients in the same plan. I am willing to bet of the people in this room, you have a large percentage of your enrollment in Medicare plus blue PPO essential or Priority Health Medicare Key or Priority Health Medicare Thrive. Um, that's just a fact of life, right? There's some of the top selling plans in the state. That's where a lot of your top enrolling plans in the state, because they're $0, so they're not selling them. Um, that's likely where the bulk of your enrollment is. It may be in other plans as well. You may have you know, multiples in other plans. But I want, to, want you to think about where that the bulk of your enrollment is, because that's what we want to uh, look at going forward here. With those plans, you can schedule ANOC meetings or annual notice of change meetings, which again are targeted only toward your existing members with one carrier. And I say one carrier just to make things easier for you so you don't have to talk about multiple, multiple product menus in one uh, session here. These events cannot be open to the public, cannot be advertised as such because they're not Medicare marketing events but they are a one-to-many uh, appointment, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. During these events, what you can do is review those annual notices of change. You can introduce 2025 benefits and talk about alternatives if, again, you do that after October 1. And I'm also thinking about, uh, you know, I see a few names on this call who I know are pretty heavy med sup writers. And anytime you're selling a med sup, you're probably also selling a Part D PDP as well. If you've got a lot of membership in the same two or three PDPs, not a bad idea to get those folks in a room here, right? And just talk, uh, you know, large broadly about what's happened to their to their PDP plan uh, going forward. Some compliance tips in this arena because it's a I think it's an underutilized tool in the aging community. Um, you can collect, or you must collect, rather, a valid scope of appointment for everyone you invite to one of these meetings that attends one of these meetings. And there's no way around uh, this particular sort of meeting here, right? You've got to adhere to the 48-hour rule. You can't honestly say that 40 people just happen to walk into your office or 30 people just happen to walk into your office, right? Uh, that's not going to pass the sniff test if anyone audits you. So do encourage you then to look at the 48-hour rule here. If you do choose to provide refreshments at an event like this, where you're talking about the ANOC and explaining plans here, you are, of course, uh, need to abide by that nominal value or $15 gift limit. And again, be mindful of venue requirements. You can't do this in the middle of a hospital uh, treatment ring, but can you do it in your in your local library? Could you do it in your in a local hotel's conference room? Absolutely. So you could invite your 15, 20, 30 members in that Medicare Plus Blue plan uh, all in the same space, get an SOA for them, and talk about what's in that ANOC for them going forward. 
Just as a reminder, though, if you have a meeting like this before October 1st, uh, because Anox should be hitting their net mailboxes fairly soon, you cannot discuss this 2025 product. So you could have this meeting before October 1, right? You could say, yeah, there's a bunch of changes here, but then you still have to meet with them a little bit later and figure out where they're going to go. And you also cannot collect apps before October 15th. And for a meeting like this, where you have a lot of folks in one place, that might be okay if you do it in October 1 to October 15 window. You might have folks that aren't ready to make a decision here, right? But they've heard from you about changes into the plan. They've heard from you about possible alternatives, and maybe they need to follow up later. But you've taken care of some of that big educational piece right up front with and for them. So again, the idea here is to have one meeting per plan with significant enrollment. So you might want to schedule your Blue Cross PP, uh, you know, PPO Essential Day or meeting, schedule your Priority Health Friday meeting, schedule your McLaren uh, Inspire Flex meeting. Um, and during those meetings, again, if after October 1, again, I encourage you to look at alternatives. Uh, Priority Health, actually, I have said their name a lot today, but I think they're one carrier that's really handling this fairly well. Um, they do have recommended pathways within a lot of their training documentation. They say, here's the changes that are happening to this plan. If your member can stomach the changes, sure, keep them there. But if they need, uh, you know, prefer a $0 premium, or if they prefer richer coverage, you can introduce these as options instead. Other carriers do have those as well. Um, they've really done a good job of putting those walkthroughs together. If the carrier you're looking at has not done as good of a job, and I'll be honest, some of them have not, your account management team here at Action Benefits is happy to help you put those side by side and figure out where you might put people or uh, you know recommended people based on what they're interested in. But two key things to make the most of the meeting here so you don't get stuck by the 48-hour rule going forward. If your beneficiaries do need time to make a decision, collect an SOA at the end of the meeting because... Uh, now that you have that valid SOA, you won't, I, they need to come back to you 48 hours later for sure, but you can still have that discussion relatively soon. Whenever they're ready to make the call you don't, and they call you up, you don't have to wait that 48 hours a little bit later. Or if the beneficiaries do make an enrollment with you during that meeting, collect that app after October 15th and only October 15th, but do collect an SOA as well. The reason why is that SOA is good for 12 months or until you use it, whichever comes first. So uh, you could have next year's SOA taken care of as part of this year's enrollment meeting. And gosh, isn't that a big time saver for AEP coming up next year, depending on how you play your cards. Debbie, before we go forward here, anything to add about what we uh, agents should know about ANOC meetings here? On um just keep in mind that the ANOC letters do come out uh, starting around the middle of September till they have the carriers have until September 30th to get those out. Um, it's very important to this, especially this year with the changes, make sure you contact your current clients because especially the, I know the PDP um, Blue Cross plans have really kind of skyrocketed in price and they're going to really see it, get a hit with that. They may put that aside, but we got to make sure that they're aware of what their changes are for 2025. It's so important. And so get on top of it, make sure that they know what's going on. And uh, if you need, uh, we will have access to generic copies coming up once they're released on Blue Cross and Priority Health. You should also be able to see it um, in your under your account as well. So any questions, you need those ANOC letters, the generic ones we can provide. Contact anybody on the individual team. We'd be more than happy to provide those with to you once they're uh, released. But mm -hmm. stay on top of it, guys. This year is a really important one. Not that other years weren't, but after 17 years, I think this is one of the biggest important years. So stay on top of it. Yes, especially for your PDP clients, but your MA clients will see some big changes here too. You're going to see, or you have seen $440 copays for your first day of hospital care. You're going to see medical deductibles, right? That they're not used to. Getting ahead of this, we can't stress enough, is, is vital to your retention efforts 
this year. I've been talking for a bit. Want to hear a little bit from you, though, though. Uh, you, though. How do you plan to reach your existing clients this fall? After what we've shared, spent uh, some time with here today, what it seems in your wheelhouse, use as many letters as are appropriate here, so multiple answers. Is email or snail mail still something that's part of your arsenal? Do you see, see a future for that going forward? Do you use other digital media? Do you use social media to get to reach out to folks? Uh, are you still going to you know, use that your bread and butter with one-on-one -on -one appointments? Or are one-to-many appointments like ADNOC meetings part of what you might uh, use going forward here as well? What are you interested in? How are you reaching clients? Or how will you reach clients this fall? Yep. <clears throat> Mailers and one-on-one -on -one are always a good combination. Um, if you are interested in narrowing your mailing audience and figuring out where to go, we do have a few good sessions, um, a few good recordings of sessions of how to find like the areas where there's people most likely to be 65 or aging in. Happy to you know put, put those in your inbox if you so choose. Uh, with your digital, your social media, again, we have a few sessions on that as well. Happy to you know help you step up your game going into AEP going forward. Um, and of course, one-on-one -on -one appointments are uh, should be an ingredient here as well. But I do encourage you to you know to consider the one-to-many appointments here as well, uh, especially if you're you know you have lots lots of people in one. Uh, plan or a few plans. Let's talk a little bit, little bit about connecting with prospects going forward. So, if the last few moments were about talking to people you already have, if you found some efficiency there, uh, maybe you've got a little bit more time on your hands than your neighbor uh, to look out, search for some new business this fall. I want to talk about with how you can compliantly do that while still serving your educational and marketing goals uh, for this year. And so I do want to talk a little bit about Medicare marketing events. Uh, I know every other year and most times throughout the year, I would highly stress educational events as a way to connect with folks. Uh, but for this year, because product is changing in so many significant ways, marketing events ahead, well, not ahead of, but during AEP um, are going to be your bread and butter for, you know, yeah, getting more folks in the room. So Medicare marketing events, again, these are open to the public, so you can advertise them. You can invite strangers, invite Joe Schmo off the street to come there. Uh, they may include, but are not limited to your current book. And again, the difference between these events and educational events, <coughs> pardon me, is that you are permitted to discuss plan-specific information, generate leads, and collect apps. So during a marketing meeting that you filed with the carrier and with CMS, and by the way, we'll help you do that. I'll show you how in just a moment. Um, you can talk about, hey, your inpatient hospital copay might be going up to this. Your medical deductible is this. That's what it means for your plan going forward um, and really educate them about the changes that are going on, especially if whoever their current agent is might not be doing as well of a job as you might want to be. Or if you're looking at agents, um, for this year, for people who don't use an agent, right? People who try to navigate Medicare independently. Believe me, they're out there and they are going to be real confused this year too. When you are considering a marketing event, uh, always talk to us first as soon as you're thinking about getting on the calendar because we can help you through the compliance steps of uh, reporting those to CMS and the carriers. Generally speaking, most carriers, and I'm, I, this is a big generalization, but uh, most carriers would prefer that you report the event by the 10th day of the month prior to the event. So if you were looking at something in October, um, most, some carriers, UHC in particular is a stickler for this, they'd want you to have that marketing event uh, scheduled and reported yesterday. Um, but that's okay, right? You still have a lot of AEP to work in for these type of events. You still have October, or you still have November and into December where you could schedule events here as well. Other carriers don't have as long of a runway. Again, our individual team can help you out with that. Minimally, though, uh, no carrier has uh, any less than a, a seven-day reporting window because they want to make, you know, review that application, review that you're going to do some uh, compliant things going forward with that marketing meeting. But as soon as the thought enters your brain, long story short, come to us. Uh, we'll help you get settled. Should also point out to you that inside insurability, which is our handy dandy knowledge base, 
we have some tips for you here as well. Um, I should mention that every article inside Shareability does have a reference number. In this case, you'd be looking for article SM00546 to come right to this article, delivering a compelling and compliant Medicare prospecting meeting. And the key uh, piece here is that you want to be able to report that event to your managing agent or your general agent or your FMO, whatever the carrier wants to call us here. Um, but there is a marketing event template and a spreadsheet that you can fill out and get to individualactionbenefits.com. Generally, for, for carriers like Blue Cross, that is uh, what they'll need in addition to your you know, the date of events, start of event. They'll want to see any ads you have. They'll want to see the presentation you, you use here. So all that's going to be attached to the same submission. Other carriers like Blue Cross, or not Blue Cross, but other carriers like Humana and UHC, the big national carriers, have their own internal systems where you'll be submitting those events through um, should you want to bring those to the table going forward. Should I mention though that before those events, when you advertise them, please only use carrier and CMS approved materials. They want you to be compliant. That's why every carrier does provide you uh, good materials for these and only use them in approved manners. And where you, where I've seen agents run into trouble with this, unfortunately, is where they take maybe a um, pre-approved ad from Humana that's designed as a print ad and they run it on social media or they run it on a website or something of the sort, uh, that was not an approved use. That's not where Humana said CMS was, you know, told CMS that the ad would appear. Uh, and they've gotten some hot water because of that. So you, if you have a flyer, only mail it out as a flyer. If you do have a digital ad, only use it as a digital ad. Cannot stress that enough. During those marketing events, and again, I know they, they sound like there's a lot of compliance loopholes or compliance pitfalls to, to be aware of, and there are some, but carriers want you to be compliant. That's why when you go look at member education uh, presentations, and I have 2024 up here because 25 materials weren't ready for all carriers here. Um, but when you look at their presentations and you look at their present presentation notes, they have a script of saying, say this and say only this, don't say that, right? Uh, they they make it really hard to not be compliant because they they know CMS is watching. They want you to bring your, you know, to, to bring more business in for them. They want you to be successful. We want you to be successful. So please stick to that script. At marketing events, should you choose to talk, talk product during AEP at some of these events, there's some things you can do. You can have your enrollment kits, uh, star rating flyers, product full-outs brochures, and your OSB, your op optional supplemental benefits, so your dental vision, uh, hearing buy-ups. Have those on in hand as well. If you do have a sign-in sheet, mark those optional. And indicate at that event that you're a licensed producer, although uh, you're all trustworthy folks, I know that you would. And be, again, mindful of time and venue restrictions. If you are hosting educational events, remember there's got to be a 12-hour window if you use or 12-hour separation between an educational and marketing event at the same venue. Uh, and again, be mindful of venue restrictions as well. Can't do it in the middle of a hospital treatment ward, but you could do it in a hospital cafeteria. Uh, after the event, though, follow-up is pretty key here, too. Um, if you do get any applications from those events, submit any apps you have within 24 hours. And again, reminder, I've said this four, time, four or five times already, but you can't take any apps before October 15th. If someone is undecided at that meeting, for all the reasons we talked about it a few moments ago, collect an SOA, that sets you up to talk to them later in that AEP when they are ready to make a decision. And again, uh, if someone does leave that information on your sign-up sheet, you know, they're, they're saying, yes, please reach out to me. Make sure you uh, pay attention to that follow-up. Debbie, anything to add about marketing events before we go forward here? No, like um, Randy had said, if you do have a marketing event you want to plan, um, you can go on some of the carriers and go ahead and put that in. Blue Cross, we actually have somebody that we can uh, send it to. We have a form and an Excel spreadsheet that we can send out. So, Contact anybody here if you have any questions or concerns and individual team will help you out with that. 
All right. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you, individual team. I know a few of you are watching here today as well. So you've been volunteered for a lot of stuff here today, and uh, we know you'll do great with it. In the interest of time, we'll skip right here to uh, bringing this all together here uh, for uh, and let you out right where we wanted to be let out here today. So first of all, again, thank you for your time and attention here today. Uh, you are in a busy time of year. Uh, hopefully you took away a few tips to uh, make this busy time of year that much easier for you. If there's nothing else you remember here today, three things I don't want you to take away. First thing is significant changes are happening for your Medicare Advantage only, your MAPD and PDP enrollees. I, if you're going to do well this AEP and retain and or grow your book of business, it, it's time to reach out. It's time to start you know, planting some seeds about that right now. Where you can and where it makes sense, want, you encourage, want to encourage you to work smarter and serve your existing clients with one-to-many appointments like the ANOC meetings. Get them all in a room. Get them all on the table. Talk about what's happening. Even if you don't take an enrollment there today uh, you know, at that meeting, you have laid the groundwork, laid the educational piece that makes enrollments a bit easier for you later on. And again, uh, depending on where you want to focus this AEP, retention we know is where most agents can, will, and should focus this AEP. But if you can find some efficiencies with a, a one-to-many meeting, with an ANOC meeting, or other ways, your time is now freed up to pursue some low-hanging fruit elsewhere to grow your book. And that is always a good thing, uh, especially during this busy time of year. All that said, again, thank you for your time and attention here today. You can always find us on LinkedIn for more information at the Action Benefits Company. Reach out to me here at learningactionbenefits.com or call our main line at 248-356-8585. Debbie, anything to add before we close it out here for the day? Yep. One more takeaway. Who are you going to call? You're going to call action. You're going to call action benefits. You're going to call the individual team. We're here for you. We're rooting for you. We want to make your AEP smooth sailing. So let's go 2025. All right. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you to our audience for spending the time here with us here today. Uh, and again, <laughs> please reach out to us with any other questions you have. Come on, cheerleading on. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> If her, if her camera was on, you would see her with pom-poms and, and doing kicks right now. I just said that to the, just point that to the team. <laughs> so that's one thing about our team is we are a great team. We're here for the rah-rah and we're here for the cheerleading. So let's go team. Right. Well, on behalf of Debbie, the cheerleaders and all of Action Benefits, again, thank you for your time here today. We look forward to seeing you again at another Action Academy session and please enjoy your days. <laughs>